We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right. How are you doing, Jared? It is finally Friday. Friday? February. That's what I was trying to say. It's finally February. It's actually Saturday that we're recording this, but it's finally February here. One month, one month closer to college football season. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it, I was really you had me flustered with the Friday. I'm still flustered all, in all honesty. First with the Friday <laughs> talk, then with the February. I mean, it is February. I, I you got you, Kyle, you got me flustered. Um, now it is important, however, to note that we are. Uh, looking forward on this podcast. This this is about being one month closer uh, to Ohio State football, to college football. Jared flustered. Yeah, it happens sometimes. See, I'm I'm the one that's kind of all over the place, and and Kyle is the foundation. Kyle's the rock, and when the foundation shifts, you know, it's all it's all downhill from there. How are you doing, though? I'm doing fine. I got no complaints. We're going to make some predictions today, some predictions that um, will almost assuredly uh, be wrong or not bold. 85, 85% of it will be wrong. Something like that. Listen, either can you honestly, you can't win. No, you can't win because either a... Well, the prediction wasn't wild enough. You played that one too safe. Or B. Uh, you know, it's. Just predict everything and you'll be right at some point. Yeah, th this is why I will take my power to prediction um, to the grave. It'll be on my tombstone. <laughs> I predicted the entire power to movement years before anyone else was predicting it. And it's all everyone just says power to now as if I didn't. I'm not going to say I invented the phrase power to for Christ's sakes. You power five. Oh, now it's power to. You know, I'm not going to go that crazy with it. But legitimately, Kyle and I were talking about the power to years before anyone else were. Uh, and that's that's our that's our wildest prediction that has turned out to be right. What do we got? What do we got today, Jared? We have we're doing uh, wild predictions, man. Wild, wild predictions, predictions for the 2024 season. We got, I got some wild predictions. Kyle allegedly has some wild predictions. There's literally nothing in our show notes. Our show notes. You, you, show want, you want me to paste it in there? I'll paste it in there. No, 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 no. If you, no, really no. you want to, if you want to be secretive, be secretive. Do, you know what? You know what? You know what? No, keep, keep them to yourself. I'm good. Keep them to yourself, Kyle. Just Kyle, the, your name's already in the notes. Why are you making a new section for you? <sighs> I do and then me. we got I do me, Jared. And then we got some me. and then we got uh, some wild predictions from our listeners. Um, yeah. So. And by the way, I think we're going to score these. We're going to score these on how wild they are. Now, ideally, I think you want to score about a five because like. If it's if it's a one. And on the wild scale. I mean, it probably means you played it too safe. If it's a 10 on the wild scale, well, then there's probably like zero chance in hell it's going to happen. I think you want to, I think a good score is about a five. This isn't necessarily a higher is better situation. All right, well, let's, let's, let's go with our first one here. Cause I think we have something. Um, we have a prediction of the same team here. Okay. So let's, let's look at this here. So, and that is the the team up north here. All right. All uh, right. Jared, why, yeah. why, don't you, why don't you why don't you start off with yours? I have I I, I have two team up north predictions. Uh, which right. one you want me to do? Which one you want me to do uh, first? Let's do the one with the record. Do the one with the record. Michigan goes sub five hundred. Wow. Okay. Sub five sub five hundred. So let's. Look at let's look at their record. Let, let's let, let's count them out here, okay? Let's count them so, out. So Fresno State. It's a win. Okay. That's you know, I'm just gonna 
put this here. Okay. Uh, Texas. That's a it is it is it is in 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 Ann Arbor. I don't care. Texas is beastly this upcoming right, season. That's fine. Uh, Arkansas State. That's a win. Okay. USC. Loss in Ann Arbor. I don't care. It's a loss. Okay. Uh, I first, I'm already Jared. We have Jared. coming in in our future episodes list. We have coming. A know your enemy Michigan edition. They're in rough shape next year. All right. The, um, finish off the the finish off September here. Uh, Jared's Golden Gophers. Loss. A loss. A loss to the Minnesota A Golden loss, Gophers. You say. All right, and then they go on the road to Seattle. That's a loss. To take on the Huskies. That's a loss. And then they get a bye week. So according to Jared, yes, Jared's Gophers, yes. According to Jared, going into their bye week, two and four. I, I have three and three. I have three and three going into the bye week. And the the, the I, Gophers can go either way. Gophers can go either way. That's a ridiculous schedule. They have Texas, a tough schedule next year. USC and Washington in your first six games. That's... <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. All right, um, at Illinois, they'll win that one. They'll win. They'll win at Illinois. Yeah, they'll win that one. Uh, they'll win uh, home to Michigan State. Michigan State's not good. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll put, put a vote, put a win, put a win, but we'll see. Okay, Oregon loss. They get creamed uh, in that game at Indiana. Probably a win. Okay. Northwestern. Win. We'll, we'll say win. Okay. And then um, and then Ohio State. Loss. So 12 games, six and six, according to Jared there. And then and then they'll go to a bowl game. And they'll lose the bowl game. Six and seven. What okay. Austin doesn't Austin doesn't like that I'm counting the bowl game. That too bad. <laughs> too bad. Uh, I had some sim- I had something similar. I had I had five losses. I mean Texas, USC, Washington, Oregon, and Ohio State. Five losses. Like By the that, way, is I, it, I this is this is best. They could at lose best, to- at best case, case scenario a seven in five team best case i would say i would say that's that's fair by the way these are supposed to be wild predictions just popping that out there where everyone completely jumps down my throat these are supposed to be wild predictions i think they'll be seven and five that's not wild which is maybe why i decided to go six and seven These are supposed to be wild predictions. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I failed this one. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, scale of one to ten, how wild is this? I'm not going to grade by the score. My prediction. Yours? Chat definitely a lot higher than mine. You, you, you got them. You said seven and five? Games. Seven and five. Yep. Okay. And Jared, and Jared has six and six. I think yours is totally plausible and is therefore um, about uh, three. Mine but man, probably they, they, on the other got, side they, of that scale, maybe about a eight. Yeah. Of their tough games here, Texas, USC, Washington, Oregon, and Ohio State. They play three of the, well, yeah, they play three of those uh Five games at home. Three, I don't care. One, two, three. Yep. All right. Um, what's your what's your other prediction you had here for Michigan? From now until th- this date next year, mm-hmm. Sharon Moore will not be the head coach at Michigan. 
He will not last. Mm. No, actually, screw that. From his higher date. From the date, he, he will not last 365, well, 366 days as the Michigan head coach. Interesting. That is bold. Uh, Jared stole this from me. What did I steal from you? <laughs> what, that Moore wouldn't be the head coach in a year? I, I've, well, you may have said it at some point, but I've been saying it. I was the one that was making the case that he was a terrible, but also probably necessary hire because of the looming sanctions. I, and I've yeah, been and, saying it. Yeah. And they had to promote from within for their, uh, I just saw that they most likely, I don't think it, it's a done deal, but their quarterback coach is now going to be their offensive coordinator because no one wants to go to Michigan to coach. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe they have a defensive coordinator yet. As I saw uh gangland point out in the chat earlier, um, What I, I credited to him with it. The, the Michigan's in a lot of trouble. Again, I think in a couple of weeks we're going to do the Know Your Enemy Michigan offseason edition. I've I'm I deep dove their roster. They are in trouble. They are absolutely in trouble. Looking forward, looking forward to to hearing this next week. Not na- well, I don't know about next week. Next week or maybe the week coming, after. Coming up. Coming. In February, in the month of February, we will do it in the month of February because we sure as hell aren't going to talk about the basketball team. All right. Um, my bold prediction. Now, you're you're probably going to look at this and like, Kyle, this isn't this isn't a bold prediction because Alabama is always good. But a lot of a t- lot of a t- lot of people right now are just putting yeah. a lot of doubt in Alabama, just saying, sure. They're gonna lo- they're gonna lose a lot of games here. Saban's not here. They're gonna suck. They lost sure. a lot of players. Absolutely, Alabama still Alabama still a very talented team, and I Alabama will not lose more than two games. That that is a bold prediction. I don't agree, but weirdly enough, that is a bold prediction. Have you looked oh, at their yeah, schedule? Let's, let's, Austin says, let, "Are you reading my mind, Austin?" All right, let's pull it up here. Do, 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 do. Uh, they play the Hilltoppers. Okay, they I play U.S. Just fast forward. We only need to get the three okay. losses. Okay, to okay. Your point at Wisconsin. I think they'll win. They'll win at Wisconsin. I. It's really weird to say, but I'm not confident. <laughs> uh they home home to Georgia. They actually have Georgia. I, I don't I don't care where I don't care where they're playing Georgia. They're losing yeah. that game. So, okay, that's one loss. Uh Vanderbilt, the Gamecocks at Tennessee, Missouri. They could lose that. At LSU, they could lose that. At LSU, they could lose that. At, at LSU's are gonna be their second loss. They mm-hmm. play Mercer in their SEC bye week and going over to Norman. They could lose that. And then I'm not they saying they Auburn. will, but they could. Honestly, that, that might be another of my bold predictions. Oklahoma at the end of the year will not be ranked. Hmm. I'd have to look closer at Oklahoma to decide if that's bold or not. That's not bold, Austin so, so says. I, 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 mm. Those are those are my two losses. It's not. Georgia this isn't and, me sticking uh, up for Oklahoma. This is me uh, questioning how hard it is to finish in the top twenty-five. Yeah, uh, LSU and Georgia are their two losses this year to me. They can lose to Missouri. They could lose to Tennessee. <laughs> not that Tennessee's all that great. <laughs> Tennessee. I, I, I stand by it. But no, I, I still think that's a bold prediction. It's not a super bold prediction, but you're right. There's so much anti-Alabama sentiment out there that it is a bold prediction. Um, I'm going to give you a seven. I'm going to give you a seven okay. on that. All right. Did you rank my Sharon Moore one? I think you should score it. 
Uh, that one is a seven, too. All right. I'll give you an eight. Uh, I, I, you know, so I was thinking I at least get an eight on that one, but I appreciate I appreciate the last second change. Um, what you got? What, what, let's go with yours next year, Jared. What, what's your next bold prediction? Um, I have that Ohio State will lose to Oregon on October 12th, but that they will revenge that loss in the Big Ten title game. I think it's that bold. It's, I actually, I, I see that happening. In in my defense, it's incredibly difficult to pre- to predict the two teams that are going to make it to the Big Ten title game. Like that's that is four predictions in one. That it, I mean, or three, three predictions in one. I'm predicting. No, that's four predictions. I'm predicting one, two of the members of the Big Ten title game. I'm predicting one of I'm predicting a loss on Ohio State's schedule, and I'm predicting the result of the Big Ten title game. That's four predictions in one on. I mean, individually, none of those are bold, but as a parlay. It's going to be funny when Oregon loses to Illinois. I, I feel like I feel like Oregon drops could drop a silly one. Say what you want to say about Ryan Day. Ryan Day doesn't drop silly games. Another right. bold prediction. Another, well, hold another on. Bold you got to score. You got to score. What's my score on that? Oh, like a two. I don't I don't think it's that important. As a parlay, as four predictions in one. Oh man, that's Austin agrees. Austin but it's agrees. four predictions. It's literally the status quo, Jared. Maybe. Maybe it is. Ducks get spread yeah, by but- Illy. Speared. It said speared. I read it as like <laughs> duck spread. Anyway, um, Utah, Kyle, Utah in their first year in the Big Twelve wins the Big Twelve. Oh, okay. All right. Um, you the Big Twelve is pretty wide open, so it's not hyper bold. But I think predicting anyone to win the Big 12 is is somewhat bold. So I mean, I don't know, I'll give you I'll give you a I'll give you a I'll give you a, I'll give you a four. OK. Because the only other teams I can the team you can see in there that could do well is, I guess, Oklahoma State. Actually, maybe Arizona. I'll take that back. Arizona. No. That that quarter that, that quarterback's coming. Is he back. still there? Oh, is he's, he still there? He's, he's sticking put. Okay. That helps. But still they lost uh some talent and they lost some they lost their coach. But if, if they if they kept uh Noah Fain is his name, right? Uh if they kept Noah Fain no, that's the that's a Iowa what's his name? Yeah, you're right. It's Noah Noah uh, Fifto, I think is how you. Yeah, say it. I, may, I may be. I got I got half of the names right, uh, and then the first letter. Anyway, we're moving forward. Um, I'm I'm just triple checking, just triple. Yeah, he, yep he he re he's enrolled withdrew in. from the portal. Yeah. All right, Kyle. Uh, what, what other predictions you have? Um, I got one prediction left, but it's a big one. Is that the 12th team? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's, that's what I have too. I was saving to the end. I was looking. Oh, to you just want to save any... that for the end of the show? Uh, that, no, that makes sense. I think that's a good idea. Well, we'll predict sure. the 12 members of the 12 team sure. playoff, but we'll save but that. You, 
maybe maybe not a bold prediction, but who who do you got winning the uh, the ACC? Probably Florida State. But I, if you if you want a bold prediction, my actual prediction's Florida State. My bold prediction would be Louisville. Okay. Which isn't, I don't think, a super bold prediction, but it's not the chalk prediction, which is Florida State. All right, Kyle, what other bold predictions you have? You got a few more in the notes. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, Penn State. Sorry, I was looking further down. Penn State will finish top three in the Big Ten. Well, hold on. Uh, Gangland says Jeff Brom could do it. I, I like what Jeff Brom's doing. I like what they did in the portal. Um, I think they have some good talent yeah. coming back. I haven't deeped over their roster, but yeah, I, I like what Brom's doing at Louisville right now. Uh, yep, Penn yep. State finished top three in the Big Ten. Um, that's bold ish. I mean, you got to consider. You got to consider I, I know, the new. I know they lost their defensive coordinator. I understand that. But I still think they did, they just got a lot of talent there. Mm-hmm. If they can figure out the offense, if they can figure out the offense, this is, yeah, this is going to be a really dangerous team. They got um, I'm a blank on his name, but they got um, cornerback, one of the best cornerbacks, uh, in the his recruiting class, who almost went to Ohio State, but then went to Georgia, but now he's just transferred to Penn State, um. Uh, excellent corner. I'm blanking on his name. Um, just this year. Yeah. Just, just in the past few weeks. No, uh, Gangland, not him. I'm looking, but, but, but Penn, Penn state, AJ Harris. Por- thank you. Or, thank you. Th- thank you. Uh, AJ Harris. Gangland said it. Uh, um, but yeah, considering where the Big Ten is now with the addition of Oregon, Washington, USC, and I guess UCLA is also there, finishing top three in the Big yeah. Ten is a big deal. Penn State does now have the advantage of not having to play Ohio State and Michigan every single season. I be, um, I don't think they play either. Not that playing Michigan's that big of a deal this year. They do, they do play. They do play Ohio State this year. Penn State does. I thought they didn't even have us this year. Oh well. Um I I think originally, but then, you know, teams added schedules. in and scheduling changes. Gotcha. Yeah, November second, um, November second in Happy Valley. Yeah. Uh Zach says top three in the Big Ten still means a playoff bid. Probably. I will say mm-hmm. almost almost certainly. Yeah. Yes. Um yeah, I, I think like Ohio State's going to be number one in the Big Ten. Oregon will be number two in the Big Ten. Um, then that third spot, you know, USC and Washington. Um, Is USC going to be all that good? I think so. Um, I mean, I mean, I mean they, I'm not they, putting they them did, in competition. They did get rid of Alex Grinch. Yeah. But he, but Alex Grinch is still coming to the Big Ten. <laughs> oh, oh, Wisconsin! What's what is she doing, Fick? I, I think they'll be in the second tier of Big Ten teams this year. Fair enough. Yeah, the big, the first tier of Big Ten teams this year, I, I think, is just Ohio State and Oregon, though. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, um, I'll give you a four on that one. Okay. The other one I have here, LSU will finish number one in the SEC. That's a bold prediction. I I have, yes, I, I know, I know, I know the quarterback's gone. I, yes, I understand that, but that defense it's going to rival Ohio State as one of the top defenses in the country this year. Mm. That defense is stellar. It will be uh, stellar or should be stellar. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> Are you asking? Smoking anything, Jared is. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> to me, there are three teams that are cut above in the 2024 season. One of them's in the SEC, and it's not LSU. Spoiler alert! Spo- spoiler alert! It's Georgia again. Um, I think LSU is an excellent football team. I think they'll make the playoffs. Um, but I don't know. I I have a hard time seeing. I have a hard time seeing them winning the SEC this year. I think they have a reasonably favorable schedule here. Um, yeah, they they kick out they kick off in Las Vegas against USC. Uh, hey Kyle, real just. I'm just uh, I'm just. Yeah, I just I don't want I just don't want to deep dive LSU schedule. We got a lot more predictions okay. to get to. Yeah, um, I, I, and and I, with I, that I can being see them said, going undefeated. Sorry, go ahead. Finish your sentence. I can see them going undefeated with their schedule. No Georgia. They do have well, Alabama, but I th- I think I think they they'll be Alabama in Baton Rouge. They, I mean, they still have to play in the SEC title game to win the SEC. So they still, in theory, play Georgia. All right, real yeah. quick, I'm going to cut to an ad break here. If you don't want these ad breaks, you can join us on Patreon, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Our podcast feed um, will cut to the Spreaker ads starting now. All right, Kyle, um, outside of our playoff predictions, our 12 team playoff predictions, those are the last of our predictions. But let's uh, let's move on to the listener predictions. Sure. Uh, first one here, uh, <laughs> Farmers for Stover. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love Farmers for Stover. That's um, awesome. Duncan from the yeah. Discord, we also call him. By the way, your LSU prediction, I'm putting it a, a, a nine. All right. Ah, awesome. It's an eight. It's an eight. It's an eight. Iowa, his Iowa, his wild prediction, Iowa versus Iowa State and the Army versus Navy both hit the yonder. That's um, like a one. <laughs> I don't think that's a that's wild a prediction. That's a two. <laughs> All right. right. Um, Uh, Austin says, here's my wild prediction. None of the teams who won conference titles in 2023 will make the semis, the semifinals. So the top four of the college football playoff this year. So no Bama in the final four. No, uh, that's reasonable to me. Uh, No Michigan in the final four. That's a given. Washington, no, Washington in the final four. Um, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Uh, no Florida state in the final four. That's questionable, but I, I, I buy it. I buy it. Yeah. No, Texas, but Texas, Texas is the, I think that Texas is the one that you, that the Texas, the Texas one is what makes this bold. Yeah. So I'll give it, I'll give it based on the others there. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a, I'll give it a, four no three four i'll say four no i think it's like a seven to say that texas doesn't make the final four kyle i said that there are three teams who are cut above the rest of college football this year i i I didn't tell you who the third team was i'll tell you i'll tell you now it's texas which is another reason why i don't think lsu is going to win the sec all right, uh, Zach here. The four um, the four best teams in college football this year are Ohio State, Oregon, Georgia, and Texas. Uh, that's a bonus bold prediction, I suppose. It doesn't mean all four of them are going to make the final four because sometimes the playoff bracket isn't going to isn't going to chalk out like that. But I think those will be the best four teams. Okay. Uh, Zach here has 
Is Iowa versus Oregon a plausible Big Ten title matchup? Um, if that's a, if match? that's a prediction, if we, if we take that question off and put a period there, if that's the prediction, that's pretty damn bold. Uh, I'll, I'll give that one a I'll give that one a nine, maybe a ten. Nine. Yeah, that's a ten. Nah, that's a ten. For those two, for specifically those two teams to make it, that's a that's a ten prediction. Is Ohio uh, Ohio State winning the Natty at at nine and three and as a ten seed? Ah, uh, you're predicting the seed, which is tough. Um, nine and three. I assume he means before the playoffs. If we go nine and three, I don't think day stays. Nine and th- that's just regulars. That, that's not even including the Big Ten title game, right? Well, at that 12 games. Um, yeah, yeah, no, if, they, if Ohio State loses right. three regular season games. I mean, they'd have to. If Ohio State loses three regular season games, I think Day would have to win the national title in order to save his job. With the amount of talent yes. on I but I but I don't see Ohio State losing three regular season games. I do not see that. I'll give so all of those things combined. Ohio State winning the national title, Ohio State losing three regular season games, and specifically calling the playoff seed for Ohio State. If all three of those things come in, that's that's a 10. That's another 10 prediction yep. for Zach. Yep, yep. Could USC have a secondary with a pulse? Now this well, one's Grinch not isn't a there bold anymore. prediction. Yeah, yeah, he's not <laughs> that coach isn't there. So yes, they they do have a pulse. I theoretically I'd like to think that they have the talent. I I've not deep dove USC's returning talent yet. So I'm not going to but yeah, um uh USC's secondary having a pulse, not being good, but just being serviceable this year. No Alex Grinch. I'll I'll give that a I'll give that a 5. Uh, let's see. Duncan from the discord, AKA farmers for Stover. Um, he, he's, he calls out that this one's not a bold prediction. Uh, Bama guts Teton after Jimmy leaves. I assume he means in the transfer portal. Um, that hasn't happened. Hasn't happened, hasn't happened, happened yet. yet. Uh, he made this prediction a few weeks ago in his defense. Um, this, he made this prediction after or before Harbaugh officially, said he was leaving. Um, There's not. I guess it depends on what you mean by guts, because. Michigan doesn't have a lot of talent returning. Like who's left on the Michigan team who you would call elite talent. Loveland. Uh, A few defensive tackles. Um, they're <laughs> not, not orgy. Um, he, he's thrown like two passes in college football. Um, there's of course, Will Johnson. I just wanted you to say his name. I know. Um, there's of course, Will Johnson, but Will Johnson, that's, he's about as Michigan as Michigan comes. He's a Michigan legacy. He's from Dearborn, I think um, mm-hmm. he's not leaving Michigan. No, I don't think so. Um, All right. Uh, what do we got next? Uh, Austin's uh, oh. Austin's next on the list. Oh, yep. There it is. Austin. Clemson will absolutely shock the world and defeat Georgia on the first weekend of this season and still somehow finish eight and four. Speaking of the second half, the second half of of that, I'll I'll co-sign. Yeah. Speaking of coaches losing three or four games in a season, like is Dabo on the same hot seat as uh, as Coach Day? Because Clemson's just like. They're they're 
the expectations that they have for Dabo is nowhere near where where they have been in in a while. Um, is Dabo in a hot sweet hot seat if that happens? Lose his, three four games. His continued stance of not using the transfer portal is going to cost him his job. Period. Yeah. Um, if they don't make the playoffs, I think they have to have serious conversations in Clemson land about Dabo. And, you know, does eight and four get you to the playoffs? I don't think so. But then again, they could auto bid their way in if those losses came. See, here's the thing. If you win, if you win the ACC, you're going to go to the big or you're going to go to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, those losses, if two of them come in, the, you know, out of conference losses. But he's already saying that they beat Georgia. So if you beat Georgia and then still find four losses, there's no way you're making the playoffs. Although that's not a part of his prediction. That that was just our con, uh, conjecture. Um, saying Clemson's going to beat Georgia's damn bold any given Saturday and all that. So it's mm -hmm. it's just the result of one game. So it's not like a why. It's not like a super wild prediction. Um, mm -hmm. so the Georgia loss I'll say is like a seven Clemson going eight and four. If we just take that on an Island, I think is totally plausible. Um, say like a two, maybe three. I, 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 no, I think it would still be, I think it's, I think it's a five. Like, I think it's kind of a, a, a perfect middle prediction. Now combine those two things together. I think it's like a nine. Maybe an eight. Clemson, Clemson going two and two going into October. Who are the two losses? Georgia and NC State. I normally would call you a homer in these situations, but <laughs> I, I kind of believe you. NC State, t NC State tends to do those kind of things, though. So. They do. But you don't know where in the schedule they do those things. Is is that's true? Florida State and Louisville. Yeah, there there's there's four losses. Yeah, I can see four losses. Oh, for yeah, sure, I can see four losses there. But I have a hard time yeah. seeing Clemson getting four losses if you give them the win against Georgia. That's where it gets difficult for me. Yeah. All right. Next up, what do we got here? That's what makes it wild, Jared. Yeah, I know. I'm just. I I, I gave be, you good. I gave you good be, scores on it. There will be no wide receivers to cross the 1,000 yard mark this year, but they will have two rushers over 1,200 yards apiece. I agree with the first, not with the second. Um. I think it I think the first part depends upon if <sighs> if Emeka can stay healthy, he'll get over a thousand yards. If Emeka plays in every game, he'll go over a thousand yards. Now, it's not absolutely a given that he will play in every single game. Um, two rushers over 1200, I think is totally achievable. I think that's totally achievable. Um, so the first one I'll say is, a is about a six by itself. No Ohio state receivers get over a, a thousand yards. I'll say is a six. Um, the two running backs get over 1200 yards. I'll say is a four combined. The two of those things together. I'd, about flip, a seven. That. I'd flip that. I flip that really like three, three or four for a, for no receivers getting a thousand and then having two rushers going for 1200 a piece. That's also, how has it even done that historically? Um, 
I I don't feel like diving into the numbers live on the yeah. show, but yes, I think it's I think it's achievable. Uh, I want to say yes that that's achievable, but you know I again I think the first part is so. We talked about this in the depth chart prediction that we did last week, right? Like I, I'm, I've essentially predicted like a five wide receiver rotation for Ohio State this year. But that five wide receiver rotation involves four of the guys rotating and a Mecca being on the field all the time. Mm-hmm. So. Again, if a Mecca stays healthy, if a Mecca plays in every game, he'll get over a thousand yards. But that's a that's an if. It's absolutely an if. And also, Kyle, you have to remember. There's an extra game or two on the schedule this year. It kind of makes those numbers a little bit more attainable. It it does. It does. But it's still. It's still a lot. It's still a lot. And 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 yes, and he didn't play every game this last last season, but. But Henderson didn't even get a thousand yards. Yeah. And that, I guess that's the other part of it. Like I'm, I'm building in, you know, what, you know, does a Mecca stay healthy? Does a Mecca not stay healthy? But to your point, Kyle, we have to also play that game with the running backs. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. a very good point. It's going to be a lot of touches with this defense. That's another, that's a great point by gangland. Ohio state's going to have the ball a lot. Like I think, this might be the highest time of possession team that Ryan Day has ever had. Ohio State, yeah. In the Ryan Day era, Ohio State will never have the, they'll set time of possession records this year, 100%. All right. All right. Before we go into our prediction for the playoffs, we're going to take one more, one more break real quick here, and we will go ahead and, uh, jump right into it yep if you don't want these ads make sure to join us at patreon.thesloopcast.com 32 dollars a year or three dollars a month okay um we're gonna do some playoff predictions we're gonna now how and i just picked 12 teams um, Austin, however, laid out the entire playoffs and I have to say, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the effort. He Austin in the bold predictions laid out in the entire playoff, it, including seating, including, um, game results. So he's automatically getting a 10 just because the likelihood of everything playing out, like he said, it plays out is, is just impossible to have predicted. So just to try and just guess the seeding is impossible. So he automatically gets a 10 uh, before we even get into the particulars of it. So I, I appreciate the effort if nothing else. So I'm actually going to save Austin's for last since he went the extra mile with it. So Kyle, let's you and I do our 12 team playoffs. Now, Kyle, you even went a step further than me because you predicted the four bye week teams. I did. I did not. Although I did state who I think the four best teams are. <laughs> so if you want to, without looking into the particulars of schedules and all that, which I didn't do because I, I didn't take the predictions that far. But I did say that I think the four best teams are Ohio State, Oregon, Four best teams aren't the four by teams. I I agree. Not that's not necessarily actually that's not how that will play out. Be, um, they can't all get buys. Yeah, I know. Because the conference champions will get, so the AC presumably the ACC and the Big Twelve champions will get buys. But, uh, screw it. I'll 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 throw in my predictions. I'll just uh. Kyle, why don't you go ahead and go through your playoffs real quick, and I'll I'll set my four apart. All right. So my four, I have Ohio State, LSU, Georgia, and Oregon. 
as your top four. And to no one's surprise, well, Kyle, it's two Big Ten teams and two SEC teams. Okay, but those four can't get the bye. Am am I'm correct in that, right? Everyone, do the do you have to be a conference champion to get the buys? Austin says yes. Confirmed. Uh, Gangland says yes. So, all right. So then, oh boy. So then I'll, that I'll, would I'll, mean. That would you want mean me that, to go, Kyle? That means that goes there. <laughs> He's doing there. it live in the notes. He's changing it live in the notes. I this am is compelling. changing it live in the in the notes here. He's doing it live. Uh, real quick, so who, Zach who says in. Be? So then, so then your four your four teams then. If they're all um, conference champions, would be Ohio yep. State, LSU, Florida State, and Utah. I mean, I di- we already talked about how I disagree with the LSU prediction, but that's fine. Um, it's a bold prediction, and it's a bold prediction. Um, Zach says in the sh- in the chat, Ryan Day shaves the beard. Hmm. Ohio State goes unbeaten. <laughs> Slaughters Teton by 100, uh, wins the Big Ten and devours Georgia for the Natty. Um, as a parlay, that's a that's a 10 prediction. Ryan Day shaves the beard. Uh, I'll give that a seven. Ohio State goes undefeated. I give that like a an eight. Slaughters Teton by 100. I don't think our offense is going to f- be able to score quite that quickly. So I'm going to I'm going to give that one a 10. Um because Michigan's defense should still be pretty decent this year, assuming they health and portal and all that. If if the roster stands pat, their defense should be pretty good. Um, wins the Big Ten. I I think that's I think that's like a that's like a three. Devours Georgia for the Natty. It's just hard to predict who's even going to be there, but I like Georgia. Um, I'll give that one a six, a seven. I give them a seven. The offense will be anemic. Michigan's offense is going to be terrible this year. Absolutely god awful. The offensive, their new offensive coordinator got fired midseason at Old Dominion in 2001. They uh Loveland's the only one. They also have Edwards. They also have Edwards. If he can stay healthy. Right, so who's your, uh, who's sure. your top four? Who, who's your top four then, Jared? Or who's your four with the buy with the buys? Ohio State, Georgia, Louisville, and TCU. Um, I'm not going to go to bat for TCU. I'm just going to say that off the top. Um, I think they lost a lot of talent year before last. I think that they got a lot better as the season went last year. Um. They made some good portal moves. I think why not TCU in the Big 12 this year? It's it's honestly kind of a crap conference. Uh I'm not I'm not gonna tell Kyle he's wrong for Utah. You can convince me anyone wins the Big 12. Almost. Sure. Almost. Like, I don't keep keep going. Baylor. Sure. Cincy. All right. Iowa State. I, I'm not going to tell you no. BYU. Maybe. West Virginia. Don't count them out. Kansas State, I might say no to. I might say no to Kansas State. Oklahoma State was arguably well outside of Texas. Well, of the teams returning. If they if they had last year's team, Oklahoma State would have won it. But I'm not sh- I'm not sure what they're what they are and what they aren't returning, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Oh, Oklahoma State, sure, why not? Always count West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Always count out West Virginia. That's a totally different sentiment. Texas Tech and WVU are the worst teams, but they could win it. Y- yeah. I'm not 
Arizona State. Guys, Arizona State. Arizona State's not winning it. Here's a fun fact, Jared. Because I, because I, 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 I feel in. very confident saying Arizona State won't win. Yeah, I don't think Arizona State will. I looked, I looked, Jared, since 1956. Okay. Ohio State's only ever had rushers, two rushers, for over a thousand yards. A thousand or twelve? Thousand. Okay. Can you guess who they were? Nope. If you had to go back that far, I'm not going to try and guess. Oh, I'll give you a hint. It's it's more recent than 56. <laughs> a lot more recent than 56. Um, Anybody in the chat want to guess? and Weber? Nope. You know, that's not a bad guess. Z- Zeke and Court in 15, says Gangland. Zeke, Zeke had, yeah, Zeke had 1,800, uh, but Curtis only had 100 yards. Really? Uh-huh. It, the year, the year was 2,000. Well, what did JT Barrett run for in 15? <laughs> The year was 2000 and, um, oh, did I read this wrong? Oh, I might have read this wrong. Oh, what? Nope. Wait. Now we might need to move forward. 2013. 2013. Uh, 2013. Would that have been Hyde and Braxton? That's it. 2013, Braxton had over a thousand yards and Hyde had 1,500. The year before that, the year before that, um, Braxton had over 1,200 yards, but nobody else, but uh, Hyde had 900 yards. So that is the only year that I saw. 2013, they had two leading rushers of over a thousand yards. And they both work running backs. I'd gets forgotten about give the man his flowers. I, I love Carlos. Hyde. Yeah. Dude had some spectacular runs. Okay, Kyle, we need to finish out our playoffs. Yes. Um, yes. You, All right. So you so, have Ohio so state, LSU, Florida state, and Utah as your buy teams. Who, who, yes. who rolls out the last bit? Uh, I have Oregon, Texas, Bama, Penn state, Georgia, no, no order. Uh, sure. Notre Dame, Ole Miss, and then, and then someone from the, uh, from the non, uh, the non Power Five or four, or whatever it's going to be. Uh, it's Tulane. Kyle, is that the? Do we have the same t- twelve, just with different teams in the buys? Uh, you have TCU in here. Oh, that's I right. Do not TCU in Utah. Yeah. Okay. Outside of that, we have the same 12 teams. Dang. There are zero. So the only, we only have one. Going to need two. Um, the rules right now, as we sit here right now, you, you, you the know, official we're, we're, rules, but what we're predicting Austin, but we're predicting right now, the official rules are six plus six, six conference champions plus six wild cards. However, it has been reported multiple times that the playoff committee is already like on their way to converting that with the death of the Pac-12, that they're going Mm -hmm. to be converting that to a five plus seven to five. Yeah. So this is a prediction and a part of my prediction and a part of apparently Kyle's, too, is that they will change that before the start of the season. And I a hundred percent, I they'll them that part. If that's a prediction that they'll change it to a five by seven by whatever the deadline is, if that's a prediction, that's a one that's going to happen. So it's 
it's it's going to be even though the rules right now say six plus six, it will be five plus seven. By whatever the deadline is that that needs to happen, I promise. They're not going to put in both Tulane and Boise. Or, you know, name your other name, your other team. Because I got news. There aren't that many good group of whatever teams left. A lot of them have moved into either the ACC or the um, Conference USA. Or the Mountain West. Yeah, so I, I was just double check. Uh, you had Louisville. I did not have Louisville. Oh, in here. that's right. I think that's a mistake on your part. I think Louisville makes the playoffs. Now, I had Louisville winning the ACC, which is at least somewhat bold. Okay. Um, who did who did you have instead? Who do you have that I don't have? Oh, you have I Bama. Guess that, yeah, I don't I have, have Bama. Bama. So I have Louisville in instead of Bama is, is and I have TCU in instead of Utah. Those are those are our differences. OK. All right, Kyle, let's uh, let's move on to Austin's mega prediction here. All right. He has here Texas, Ohio State, Florida State, Oklahoma State as your as your top four. And then his next 12 is Oregon, Georgia, Ole Miss, Notre Dame, USC, Bama, Liberty, and Tulane. Yeah, so he, Austin's still working under the 6 plus 6 model, which, in his defense, is the rule right now. As we record this, 6 plus 6 is the format. I think no it'll change. Oregon? No. Oh, wait, wait. No, he has Oregon at five. Yep, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. He has USC in there, which neither of us have USC. Mm -mm, Nope. He has, Kyle, no LSU. Who You have winning the SEC. He doesn't even include LSU. That's a pretty big difference. Um, He does not have Louisville in there, which is who I had winning the ACC. Um. They lose Daniels. I, I know. I, I I think even without Daniels to what Kyle was saying earlier, I think their playoff or their defense is still good enough. They have enough talent on offense and their defense is I really good. Playoffs. That's good enough to get them into the top 12, in my opinion. You could say they're not good enough to win the, the SEC with that. And I agree with you. Kyle doesn't. Um, We all have. We all have Texas getting in. We all three have Ohio State making uh, winning the Big Ten, getting the bye. Uh, that's our o- Ohio State is the only team who all four of us agree uh, as. Well, I guess technically we all agree that Tulane wins their conference, too. But of the power four, the only ones we all agree with is Ohio State. Yes. So uh, only so many games can be won when these teams play each other. Oh, I I know. Uh, the, predicting the playoff this far out was uh, not supposed to be within the scope of this show, but we all did it. So here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not what we started this episode doing. Um, but here we are. OK, so he those are his 12 teams. And then he gives us the results of the first round of the playoffs. He has Oregon defeating Tulane, Georgia beating Liberty, Alabama defeating Ole Miss, and Notre Dame defeating USC. Then he has Texas beating Notre Dame. He has Ohio State beating Alabama. He has Georgia beating Florida State. And Oregon, huh, look at that. He still ended up with my final four. (laughs) He still ends up with my final four, who I think are the best four teams. They're the easy four best teams. I, I, I'm not claiming my, I'm not claiming my uh, prediction or my opinion that they're the four best teams as a wild prediction. I think that's somewhat chalk. 
I think that's a popular opinion. Um, then he has Texas beating Oregon, which oddly enough, um, he has Texas in the final four, even though uh, further up earlier in the show, he said that Texas would not make the semis. I guess they're two separate wild predictions. Uh, yeah, I guess they're just two separate wild predictions. Different predictions. I, I, I feel you, Austin. I feel you. Yep, yep. But then he has Texas beating Oregon. He has Ohio State defeating Georgia. Then he has Texas beating Ohio State to win it all. I like Texas this year. I do. Again, they're one of the four cut aboves. And like, honestly, you make that final four. You make that final four and just like anyone can beat anybody. It's. It's 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 just football's like that, man. When you have to earn your way into that final four. Those those teams are all going to be good. And then there'll just be injuries and it's just, it's impossible. Yep. Um, but I, I, I do think without going through all the seeding, I think the semis is Texas, Ohio state, Georgia, Oregon. And I, I just hope that however that plays out from a seeding standpoint, that the Big Ten plays the SEC in both of those games. However that plays out from a seeding standpoint, I want an opportunity to get either two Big Ten or two SEC teams in there. That's it. I just want that opportunity. I want I want the conference I want the conference stuff to be sorted out in the semis. Wouldn't it be a wild in this scenario, Kyle? In in Austin's scenario. You could have Ohio State and Oregon play each other three times, which is a bold prediction in and of itself. Ohio State and Oregon will play three times. That is crazy. And by the way, I don't. What is, what is this? What is this? The, what is this? The NFL? Right. I it's to, And by the way, if we just take that sentence, Ohio State and Oregon will play each other three times. How would you score that as a bold prediction? Because it's not ridiculous. How would you score that prediction? Austin says a four. I think it's higher than a four. But it's like a six. Maybe a seven. But may maybe a six. Because it doesn't even have to be like in the semis or in the... It could happen earlier in the... Depending upon how the seeding plays out, it could happen earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I think that's it. I think that's all we got for our bold predictions here. Some bold, some not, but some extra bold. Yeah, Zach, some Zach, extra bold. Zach, Zach, Zach brought the bold ones. You, some might call them unrealistic. Some might call them jokes. I, however, decided to take them all at face value. <laughs> Some might say that's just Zach. Uh, he has the role shit poster general in our Discord server for a reason. <laughs> and we love him for it. Mm -hmm. All right, Kyle. Um, anyone in the chat want to throw in a bonus one? Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I uh, do. I okay. do, and it is it is the man. It is number forty five himself. Yes, it is Archie. I was, I was hoping you were going to see this. It is Archie Griffin. Now, yes, Archie Archie will be getting a statue at the Rose Bowl. Hell I yeah. think I think they are announcing to um, make a make a public dedication sometime in August. I believe it is, but. Dare I say shame on Ohio State for not building one first? <laughs> I, I, I had the same thought. 
Uh, two two extra bonus <laughs> predictions in the chat. JJ Smith has eight plus touchdowns. That's you know what they they they, they should have. That's like a. It's we, like we should, a we six should have or seven. one of him. We should have one of him, one of him and Eddie at least. You should have one of every Heisman. It's six. Hmm. It's six, six bronze yeah. statues. There's a lot of bronze statues on the Ohio State campus. Actually, how many are there? Woody has one in front of the athletic center. Um, there's one in front of the. Uh, uh, there's Jesse Owens in front of the track. I, I, I can't remember the name of the track facility. That's why I was hesitating. Uh, is it named after Jesse Owens? Or is like I forget, like I feel like this the track stadium's named one thing, but the actual track is named another thing. I, I forget. But um so Jesse Jesse Owens has one. And yeah. But yeah, Eddie George I, I think should get one. And and then of course Archie should get one. Do you consider the the um, the marching band having one with script Ohio? You know, it's not it's not if you actually <laughs> yeah, yeah. want to because like there's a bunch. of course, I don't think the Brutuses are bronze, but there are a bunch of Brutus statues all over campus. Um, yeah, everything I'm seeing, it's just. Yeah, there there is a bunch of Brutus ones too. But yeah, everything that I'm seeing, yeah, those are I think there's the only two uh athletes or coaches that are that are in the uh that are in bronze. That are in bronze on on the stadium. I cannot find anybody else other than Brutus. <laughs> I don't I don't think those are bronze. If if they oh, are really? bronze, they paint it over them. No, there's there's a there's a big old bronze one in um oh in the um, in the union in Ohio in the in union, union he's sitting on the bench yeah yeah you got I forgot you about that one old, can I copy it well let me copy there it is everyone has a picture with that one <laughs> yes yeah. no one asked. <laughs> All right, that, that's that's it. That's that's all I got here because, like, We're like last week and the week before and the week before that, no one wants to talk about the the basketball team. These 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 are factual statements. Um, so we're going to move on. We're going to move on. Oh, oh um, one last thing. Bonus. Mike, wait Hall, Mike Hall named the top defensive lineman at the Senior Bowl practice. Nice. Very nice. I forgot, uh, I, forgot, I, I forgot about Mike Hall. He's he's going to make himself a lot of money. I think so. Um, we did have another bonus prediction from Austin in the chat. Uh, Ohio State leads the country in forced turnovers. That's. You just you never know how high that bar is going to be. But it's certainly possible. Uh, the the one thing that makes me doubt it is I don't know how much Ohio State turnovers are so opportunity based. And if you are forcing a lot of three and outs, you're reducing a lot of your opportunity to get turnovers. So that might make that difficult. Um, our team's going to be back to the quick pass game again maybe I, I don't think they ever left it to be honest um yeah just just uh, just force the turnovers on the first set of downs against us in particular no 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 i agree um that's that's been the book against ohio state for a long time now is to just get rid of the ball as quick as possible because the pass rush is coming it's why it's one of the reasons why our sack numbers are have been so limited for so long is because Big Ten teams simply don't try to 
throw the ball deep against us. It's three steps and get rid of it. That's yeah. one of the reasons why our sack totals go up in like when we played Georgia, our sack total went up. When we played Missouri, our sack total went up. Why? Those teams thought they could, you know, no, 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 we don't need to do that. We can actually just throw the ball against them and then we'd get a bunch of sacks. All right. We are way over. We are way, way over. It's time to end the show. Um, I'm not even going to do any plugs. Um, Discord.thesloopcast.com and Patreon.thesloopcast.com. There, I did too. Um, tonight's ending music brought to you by the Cordial Sins. Cordial Sins have a uh, concert coming up. Not, not for a while yet, so I might play them again when we get closer. Uh, but they have a concert coming up March 22nd, so... Keep that in mind. I'll post a link to the uh, to be able to buy tickets to that show. I'll post that link in the show notes. Uh, but for now, we're doing uh, Cordial Sins. And like I said, play, we'll probably revisit that again when we get closer to the show. So but with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music and, of course, support local podcasters. Once again, these are the Cordial Sins. <laughs>